Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss something that scientists have recently identified, but cannot actually explain. For some reason or another, a lot of different marine animals seem to like to swim in circles, and seem to actually do so in a very similar manner. And we're talking about animals that are completely different from one another, and why they're doing so is not entirely clear. And so let's talk about how all of this was discovered and why it might actually help us solve a few mysteries in the future as well. First of all, all of this comes from this new paper that as always you can find in the description below that used some of the most modern techniques including some of the most modern data loggers used in marine biology to create advanced three-dimensional movements of various animals that were tagged using this tool which then allowed them to extremely precisely track the movements of a lot of different large ocean dwelling animals with unprecedented precision both in space and in time. And even though all of these animals that they used in this study, generally speaking, were moving in very different patterns, at some point all of them started exhibiting very similar patterns. They all started to circle one way or another, creating various types of circular and spiral shapes which all seem to be at a relatively constant speed and even relatively similar angular speed as well. And they did so several times. Suggesting of course that this was a common type of behavior for a lot of different marine animals. But the question is why? And what purpose does this behavior serve? Now originally all of this was discovered by studying green sea turtles. And specifically by looking at their homing behavior when they try to return to the place of birth. Today we know that a typical turtle after it's born is able to travel across vast regions of oceans to then years later when it's ready to mate return back to the original island and to essentially create new life. And this ability to find its own home or the homing behavior as it's known is obviously not unique to turtles. But the scientists in this study wanted to see how good turtles truly were in their ability to actually find their original island. And so for this study, they took a few nesting turtles, tagged them with the device I showed you previously, and placed them in a different location to essentially test their navigational abilities. To no one's surprise, every single turtle returned back to where it originally started from, but in every single case, the scientists observed a very interesting circling behavior in each of these turtles. In this case, what really surprised the scientists is that the circling behavior occurred at very specific locations. So for example, right before the approach to the final target. And in one particular example, they noticed that one turtle did approximately 76 different circles and on the next day did 37 more. And following this, it was able to choose the correct direction where to go. And naturally, this means that very likely the turtles here use this as navigation. Which in this case suggests one thing. It's very likely that the turtles are able to sense the magnetic field of the planet and use the magnetic lines to navigate to the location where they have to go. And geomagnetic navigation does make sense, especially because the turtles generally do not have very good vision and are also normally in somewhat murky waters. And geomagnetic navigation in this case explains pretty much everything, from their ability to find the original place of birth to the circling behavior at certain locations in order to choose the next target. And as a quick side note, submarines today use a very similar technique when underwater. They will generally circle around in order to locate themselves using the geomagnetic field of the planet. And so I guess mystery is solved. Or is it? Well, when the scientists reported these observations to their colleagues, they discovered that a lot of other animals were doing the same. And in some cases, it could not be explained as a navigational tool. For example, scientists using the same tool to measure the motion of different whales discovered that the whales tend to do the same. They tend to circle around. But most of the circling in whales seems to be in regards to feeding. For example, in humpback whales that you see right here, the circling motion combined with the release of bubbles is sort of used to create a kind of a bubble cage in order to trap their food. And this type of a circling behavior has been observed many, many times. And so it looks like some animals, like whales, do this for different reasons. Then the scientists also examined approximately 300 different circling events in four tiger sharks. And in this case, it seemed to have been related to foraging for food, or at least looking for food. Even though the actual motions were extremely similar to the ones in the whales and in turtles. But we know that sharks are really really good at sensing electric fields and also magnetic fields. So maybe there is a kind of a combination of both in there. 
As a matter of fact, back in the days, back in college, I did research on the hammerhead sharks, and they tend to use their hammerheads as a kind of a sensor, as a kind of a, almost like a, a metal detector. And they tend to circle around the same area in order to find food hiding in the sand. And so once again, a somewhat similar behavior, but for a probably different purpose. Then they also looked at different mammals, such as fur seals, and they found that circling here was mostly done during the day, even though for the most part these animals feed at night. So here the circling is done for an entirely different reason, and probably for reasons that we currently cannot explain. They also noticed that some sharks tend to circle around during mating rituals, and in this case the researchers had the data from a male tiger shark that was using the circling behavior in order to approach a female, but once again using very similar patterns and very similar motion to the other circling behavior observed in other species. And interestingly this was also observed in penguins, which are birds, specifically king penguins that tended to circle at the surface, but usually in between deep dives when they gather food. So when they're gathering food they're not circling, but once near the surface they tend to play around and circle like you see right here. And right now, this doesn't actually have a really good explanation or how this behavior was evolved or why it even exists. As a matter of fact, it's kind of confusing. Swimming in a straight line is definitely the most efficient way to achieve something. So why certain animals tend to circle around instead is not entirely clear. Although it is quite possible that there is no one single explanation for all of these animals and for why they tend to have the same behavior. It is actually quite possible that some of these animals use this for navigation, some of these animals use a similar technique for something entirely different, and some of these animals, like these fish right here, might actually just use this for fun. As a matter of fact, we know that even animals on Earth tend to circle around for one reason or another. For example, dogs do tend to spin in circles or sometimes tend to spin around the same spot in order to find the proper location that does seem to correlate with the magnetic field as well. For example, when it comes to a sleeping position, they always tend to choose a certain location on the south and north axes. Nobody knows why, but they tend to do this anyway. We also know that birds circle around, and we also know that birds do have a magnetic receptor that allows them to navigate well, but circling in this case is not actually related to navigation. Most birds tend to fly in circles in order to get a bit of a boost from what's known as a thermal. Thermal is a rising warm air that exists in certain locations, depending on the wind conditions and depending on a lot of other conditions, that birds often use and circle around in order to get free boost to get lifted up in the air so that they can then just descend down without expanding any energy. This is why some birds just circle around without flapping their wings at all and can do so for hours and hours without really doing anything. And so a somewhat similar behavior in this case is used for an entirely different purpose which also seems to be the case for a lot of these animals investigated in this study as well. Some of them tend to use this for navigation, some of them tend to use this for feeding behavior, but some of them tend to use it for some other unexplained reasons. And so in this case, the answer is that nobody really knows why so many different animals tend to circle in a somewhat similar way, especially when it comes to marine animals. It seems to be a mystery nobody really has an answer to just yet. But luckily, because of these new trackers and new inventions, when it comes to three-dimensional motion tracking of animals underwater, it seems that it's just a matter of time before we collect enough data and someone comes up with an actual answer for at least how this behavior evolved and what purpose it usually serves in most marine animals. But right now, what all of this suggests is that, unlike on the surface, where the straight line seems to be the preferred motion for most animals, Underwater, because of the murky conditions, because of the lack of signals or signs in order to track your own position, circling seems to be the preferred way of movement for most of these animals. And it seems to be the preferred way to orient yourself, to choose the location to travel, and more importantly for feeding and even for mating. And so definitely a really interesting discovery and something that I'm hoping to learn more about in some of the future studies. But until then, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. All of the studies and all of the relevant links are in the description below. And so subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful present t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.